Here we're going to take another look at it using the first derivative test in order to analyze a function for its maxes and mins. So we'll, we'll start with polynomials here. And again, you, you'll notice I have the graph here, um, only so we can just confirm that our calculus is agreeing with what the actual function is doing on the graph. So we've got this cubic, negative 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 3. And the first thing we'll want to do is to take its derivative so we can get information about where it's increasing and decreasing. So that's going to be negative 6x squared plus 12x, which I can factor into, I think I can take out a 2x, so I get 2x times a negative 3x um, plus 6. All right, so now what we'll want to do is find the critical points. You'll notice that the derivative is always defined, so we don't have to worry about where it's undefined. Um, but you do have to consider that when you're finding critical points. So the next thing is we want to find out where it's equal to 0. So 2x times negative 3x plus 6 equals 0 when x equals 0, or when, in this case, x equals 2. And so then I would strongly recommend making making your f prime number line. So what the critical points need to go on this number line, 0 and 2. And now we'll want to plug in values that are in between, or that are basically just not 0 and 2, so we can find out what the derivative is doing. So let's plug in 1 first. So f prime of 1 is, um, we don't really care the value, just whether it's positive or negative. So uh, I'm going to plug it into the top version, I guess. Negative 6 times 1 squared plus 12 times 1. And that is a negative 6 plus 12, which is positive. So I'm going to put a plus there. And let's plug in a number to the right of 2, f prime of, let's say, 3. And that's going to be, I'm going to plug this one into the second version then. 2 times 3 times negative 3 times 3 plus 6 and this ends up being a positive times a negative because negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 so this is negative 3 times 6 which is uh, which is negative and then lastly I'll plug in um, negative 1 And when you do that, you get, so I'm going to plug it into the second version again, the factored version. 2 times negative 1, negative 3 times negative 1 plus 6. And this ends up being negative 2 times a positive 9, which is a negative again. All right, so that actually, uh, no, I didn't really care about the values, but in this case, you kind of couldn't avoid finding them. So what did the question ask? It said, locate the relative max and min. So I definitely have a local min at 0 because the derivative changes from negative to positive. So that's a local min. And then I have a local max here at 2 because the derivative changes from positive to negative. So let's say local, local min at x equals 0, and a local max at x equals 2. Since it said uh, to locate them, I'm, I'm interpreting that to mean just find where they are. If they asked you for the relative max and minimum values, then you would need to plug 0 and 2 into your function to actually find the y values. So make sure you pay attention to the directions as they're stated. The difference between this problem and the last one is that here we're actually finding the absolute maximum value of a function on a closed interval, which means we're going to want to check the endpoints. All right, so I'm going to just circle that and remind us that we're going to want to check the endpoints. Too often students are somewhat, um, I don't want to say lazy, but they're careless in the sense that they, they'll forget to check endpoints, but remember that endpoints are candidates for maxes and mins, for absolute maxes and mins, so we'll want to make sure we check them. Okay, so let's 
take the derivative of this function, g prime of x equals the derivative of 1 3rd x cubed is just x squared, and the derivative of minus 4x is minus 4. And so this can factor into x plus 2, x minus 2, and that's always defined, so I don't have a critical point where the function's undefined. The derivative is defined on all, uh, on all the real numbers. So this equals 0, or setting it equal to 0 will tell me where the critical points are in which the derivative is 0, and that happens at 2 and negative 2. So this time when I make my f prime number line, I can put, I don't need to put arrows because this is a closed interval that goes from negative 1 to 4. And negative 2 is not on this interval, so even though that came up as a critical point, we don't need to put it on our, our, F, uh, our g prime number line. All right, so now let's, um, let's figure out the behavior of the derivative on these two intervals, negative 1 to 2 and 2 to 4. So let's pick a candidate x value to represent negative 1 to 2. So how about 0? Usually convenient. So I'm going to plug it into the factored version of the derivative, 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 2. And again, all we really care about is if this is positive or negative. We can see that it's going to be negative. So I'll even just write that. It's less than 0. So I'm going to put a negative there. And then g prime of, let's take 3 to represent the interval 2 to 4. So that's going to be 3 plus 2 times 3 minus 2, which is positive, a positive times a positive. All right, so I'd like to mark up my number line. Let's say, let's uh, note that at 2, the derivative changes from negative to positive. So I've got a min here. So I've got a local min here. And I actually have an absolute min because if the function is decreasing to 2 and increasing to 4, then there are no other candidates for mins. So that's also the absolute min. But that wasn't the question. The question was to find the absolute max. By the first derivative test, at negative 1, I also have a min. I'm sorry, I have a max, because the function, uh, the derivative is negative to the right of it, which means your function is decreasing. So I've got a max here, a local max, and also at 4, because the function is, um, the derivative is positive to the left of 4, which means the function is increasing up to 4. So that's a local max. So I've got two candidates for the absolute max, and the only way to figure out which one's the absolute is to find the y values at those x values. So we need to evaluate. Now this would be a non-calculator question just to, to get that in here. Um, you know, if you're taking the AP exam, this would totally be a non-calc problem. That's, I know I have the graph here to help us, but you want to be able to do this type of thing without a calculator. So let's plug in negative 1, 1 third, negative 1 cubed, minus 4 times negative 1 gives me negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so it's negative a third plus 4, which is 3 and 2 thirds. And then g of 4 is equal to 1 third 4 cubed minus 4 times 4, which equals, that equals 64 make this smaller here. That equals 64 thirds minus 16, which is 48 thirds. And 64 minus 48 gives me 16. And so maybe the best way to compare them is improper, frac uh, improper fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this mixed number up here as 9 11 thirds. And now it's clear that we have our absolute maximum value at 4. So this is also the absolute max. Now the question asked for the absolute maximum value, we have an absolute max value of uh, 16 thirds.